Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Her learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Rachel is annoyed. <laughs> you know, nothing stays in private. The we can have a conversation. I don't even know why I try to talk to you. Yeah. I should only talk to you when we're recording. The Democrats have annoyed Rachel again. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. We were supposed to have a guest. Well, first of all, we were supposed to have two guests. I'm not, you need to address this because people were guessing. They were guessing what, who they thought it was. So I'm not going to tell you who it's going to be because we're still going to have this person. We think, but they had to go. They had to leave. They you to, really think this person's coming? Oh, for, without a doubt. I spoke to them. What did you? Can I ask? What did you tell them? Did you tell them they were coming into a hostile environment? Did nope. you tell them that I was against? Nope. Anything? Nope. I told okay. them that this is going to be a cultural celebration of them because that's what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and and Rach, I gotta be honest with you. I don't think that you're. I think that you're gonna be overwhelmed by the charm. Ah, uh, without a doubt, I can tell. I interviewed this person before. So what? So did you get at them? Them? I'm not gonna get at anybody. You be getting at people when they not it here. Depends, you need to get at them. It when they, that's not true. And it. Oh no, no, it's not true that I don't. Yeah. Like if I haven't, if I'm gonna say what I say on mm-hmm. the mic in person, but true. we just haven't had a lot of in persons, mm-hmm. but. It's the way you set me up to talk, to discuss the oh, topics that. with that. It's not like I'm just, you know, just giving this information out here because this is what I want to talk about. You put me in a situation. You put my back up against the wall. It's not true. I say I can't my, help it. I give opinions and they rattle you so much. <laughs> you troll me. I you don't troll, troll you. Me. This is how I feel. And by the way, <laughs> uh, we're going to quit talking in codes. I think people know who it is by now, but I still don't want to. I want it to be a surprise when they walk in here. But this is how I really feel. I like to give people their flowers. I like people to have their flowers. You don't. No. You like for you, people to you have give, you give, wilted no. fucking greens. I give the right yeah. flowers. You well, just be throwing out flowers. You get a flower. You get a flower. And you get a flower. Why can't everybody have their flowers? Not everybody does. It depends what kind of Not flower. Everybody it depends what kind of deserve, flower. Jesus it depends Christ. on what kind of flower you're what trying to the give Jack them. And Jill what kind of flower are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> People deserve their flowers, Rachel. They do. They do. They do. They do. Who doesn't deserve flowers? Give me an example of somebody well, who doesn't Well, not everybody does flowers. something to deserve their flowers, right? You do something to get your flowers, right? I'm going to give that person their flowers because they did this. Does Okay, let's play a game. Who deserves their flowers? Does Bow Wow deserve his flowers? What In what regard? Bow Wow's a legend. Yeah, well, honestly, he's had a career of how many years? Of course, he deserves some flowers. Does Bow Wow, Bow wow deserves his flowers? Yeah. yeah. Does Hitmaker deserve his flowers? Yeah. Okay. Does Brittany Renner deserve her flowers? For what? For being Brittany Renner. She, she did you see what did you see what happened at at uh Was she threw water? You want to give her flowers for throwing water in somebody's she face? She tolerated no disrespect. Well, I then I always will get flowers for exactly. that. Exactly. I was just about to say, that could have been you. That reminded me of you. Throwing water in somebody's <laughs> I've face. Never throwing water in anybody's face. But you would. I'll throw something else. What would you throw? What would you throw? Like a fist or something like that. Whatever. You ain't about that, man. Okay. You had fine. a chance to fight a girl. And you was you was ducking. Who? Who uh, that? Well, what's, what's her name? Who? I can't remember her name. I always forget her name. What's her name from The Bachelor? Oh, that's not, that's not a fight. <laughs> you saw you saw her boxing. You was like, I'm not fucking with her. Nah, you'll, you'll be her ass. You'll be her ass. Donnie, who who else do you feel like deserves their flowers? Who doesn't get them? Oh, uh, who else deserves? I think does Amarion deserve his flowers? He does. Not for that versus. No flowers should be given for the verses. But overall, but like all these what he's con- their what he's contributed to, like mm-hmm. being on that uh, what was it the Millennium Tour? Millennium Tour. Like yeah, that he g- definitely B2K. gave something to the all music of industry. All of B2K deserves their all flowers. of B2K absolutely. But if we're talking about a, pers- I'm talking about instances for flowers being given, not like overarching thing. Amarion did not deserve any flowers for verses, other than the laughs that he gave us. I, see, I still think that means you get flowers. Okay. Because this is what I'll say. We always talk about what people do when they get there. But if not for Marion and Ray J, hmm. that would have been another whole hum versus. 
to be honest with you, I give people their flowers for the entertaining shit that they do. Really? Even when, cause, 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 You're not going to give Mario anything? I give Mario flowers, but then Mario made some decisions afterwards. But I give... What I did give, he do? I give Mario... I give, first of all, I give Mario his flowers. Mario doesn't need flowers for me. Mario had a number one record. Mm. Mario's a big star. I give Mario flowers for going out there, but also I like to be entertained. So if you go out there, you do. So some Mario inter- didn't entertain you. He did, but not as much as Mario. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. So you rather laugh at someone that's more entertaining to you than to appreciate them, you know, doing their craft? Because you weren't, you weren't, you were not entertained by Omarion because he was just killing it on stage. Mm. You were laughing at him. You laughed at him eating that watermelon. You laughed at him humping shit, that microphone on stage. You laughed at his voice trying to find the right note. You laughed at that. So there are two types of people in the world. Mm-hmm. There's somebody who is super moved by watching somebody play the guitar beautifully on stage. Right. And then there's somebody who gets super excited by watching somebody smash up their guitar. On stage. <laughs> I am the former. And I am the <laughs> And you're the latter. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the other one. I'm the other one. Um, I saw Nope. Oh, you did? Yeah, I saw Nope. We did an episode of The Big Picture for it, me and Sean Fennessy. Sean, who grew a mustache, is in the other studio. Right I don't want to. No, no, no. I saw Nope too. So what? Just because. I might not be as well versed in the movie category doesn't mean that I'm not trying. Yeah. I need to be on one of these movie shows just not, once. It, well, I think you should be. Thank you. Because I think that Sean. would be akin to watching Omarion eat the watermelon. <laughs> oh, wow. So I would give absolutely nothing. I would be a joke. That's what, you, you know, no, did y'all hear that? I actually, I'm a joke. I, my thing is this. It's like... You're so dismissive about movies, though. No. These podcasts are for people who love movies. Mm, there's and you're certain so movies. You're so dismissive about movies. Sir, not every movie. That's like, not true. What movie? What movie? You feel like when like? we had a conversation about Boomerang, I wasn't dismissive at all about that. People agree with I don't you. understand Marvel World. And here, and, and can I just say this? as Because mm. we haven't talked since I went to Comic Con. Yeah, we Comic-Con. haven't. I am intrigued by that world. I'm not dismissive. I'm only dismissive because I can't contribute to the conversation. I don't understand it. I don't know the history of it. Mm-hmm. But being at Comic-Con, and I wish I had been there Saturday, the big, big day, the Marvel day, I loved seeing so many people who were just like into that world. It was exciting for me to see people in costume and going into different rooms and seminars and excited by the trailers that were coming out for the very first time. Mm-hmm. I did Dungeons and Dragons. That was the... d d Yeah, that was Chris the carpet Pine. that I did with Chris Pine, Hugh Grant, um, Ray Gajan, uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. It was great. Sophia. Um, so I have an appreciation for it. I'm not mm-hmm. dismissive. I just can't talk about it like you can. Dungeons and Dragons was an era in the 80s. First of all, there's a cartoon, Dungeons and Dragons, which we watched. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there was the game, which. Yes, that's what I know. I played, mm-hmm. but then I had to stop playing. You got too into it? Nah, it's because people would say that Dungeons and Dragons. See, people don't remember the shit that happened in the 80s. People would say that Dungeons and Dragons was turning kids into devil worshippers. No, oh, demonic. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, every, yes, everybody, everything in the, <laughs> in the 80s were so quaint <laughs> in that our biggest fear was people worshiping the devil. That's like not even the tip of the iceberg. It was like, this music is going to make you worship the devil. Dungeons and Dragons is going to make you worship the devil. Play this album backwards. Worship the devil. The devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. Uh, Salmon Rushdie, all of this stuff, blah, 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 blah. But now that's that's not even the thing anymore. Now the thing is, you know, uh, JFK Jr. coming back from the dead and, and taking over the world, QAnon type pizza gate bullshit. That's kind of out there. But I had to stop playing Dungeons and Dragons because my dad saw it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that Dungeons and Dragons was going to turn you into a devil worshiper. And then by the time that craze was over, it was magic cards came in. And I started fucking with that. Started fucking with the magic cards. <laughs> magic the Gathering. Boom, 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 boom. You know this. You've seen the magic cards before. I, I don't know if I have. You've never seen the magic cards. So when Magic the Movie comes out, don't ask to be on and I wouldn't. the big picture. I'm asking for movies that I've seen, like Nope. But please continue. You saw Nope. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts. A lot of people have strong feelings about this. Not that good. <gasps> what wasn't good to you? I don't want to spoil anything because a lot of people haven't gone out there to see the movie yet. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to be 
do a whole bullet point of telling the movie. You can just talk about Here's why. Here's the thing about Nope. Incredibly well made. Jordan Peele is a master at taking a concept and turning it on his face to bewilder the audience. And what the hell just happened, Rachel? <laughs> to bewilder the down. audience. But I'll, let me tell you something now. Nope. Waited too long to get going for me. And a lot of the things in the movie were simply there just for the sake of being there until we got to whatever else we were doing. The thing with Get Out is there's a narrative that, that I'm sorry. You can't compare. You have keep to. Going. But that's the problem. No. I'll that's tell you, everybody's comparing everything to Get Out. I'll tell you why you have to compare it. Okay. Because the films have the same structure. It's, the, the reason why you compare them is not because it's the same director. It's because the films have the same structure. Structure. The structure of the film is intrigue scary, intrigue scary, intrigue scary, third act, here's your point, everything comes right to you, right? If you're going to do that, there's a reason why it worked in Get Out and a reason why it hasn't worked in these other movies. Because, you know, when you're watching Get Out... And the black people are acting strange like that, and he's mm -hmm. in a place he's never been. Mm -hmm. It you are tethered. Huh, tethered. Nice, nice way to tie it in two movies. Good job. You are tethered uh, to that character and what is going to happen. In order to do that again, that kinetic energy has to be maintained from the beginning of your movie all the way to the point to where your reveal. And nope, in my opinion, didn't even get close to doing that. Nope, had me checking my watch a couple of times, and I'm gonna keep it gangster. So what happens in the beginning with the father doesn't start off with a bang? Yeah, it does. But here's the thing. They are so... Because you said it took too long to get going. That's they, what I'm saying. It, it, it does. But they're so accepting of that. They're so accepting of that that there's no intrigue to it at all. Like, they're so accepting. Everybody, if that happened to somebody in my life, I would be fucking dedicated for the rest of my life to finding out exactly how... That went down. Remember, they say they do what say. happened. So I think that's when you kind of let it go. Because I was like you. And then they mention it because they don't mention it immediately. And it's like, oh, or maybe they do. And you're like, oh, OK, that's what happened. And I didn't question it after that. But my point is that if that happening would have been, if he'd have been on a mission to find out how that happened, let's say he didn't believe that. He didn't believe the explanation that was given. Watch the movie. We're talking cryptically, but well, I don't want to spoil the movie for anybody because all y'all do on the internet <laughs> is bitch and fucking moan about everything. Let us spoil the movie even a halfway. Oh my God, I can't believe they spent 10 minutes for you. Oh my God, I fuck it. So what I'm saying is that <laughs> in, in that situation, if he had been trying to figure out what happened, and if that would have been how he stumbled onto everything, mm -mm. it would have made sense narratively. But they they were like, okay, that's what went on. And then see, I disagree. No. I like the fact that you you thought you accepted that as the truth, and then you learn later that oh wait, no, this is actually tied to this. I liked having yeah. to reference back to that. But you know, to each his own. I think it's definitely one of those movies that you're either gonna really like or you're really not. For me, I watched it and I was like, okay. And then after I did interviews and. I really went into thinking about it. I was like, oh, I really like it. Like it was like a slow burn for me. Mm -hmm. And I know if I saw it again, I would have an either, another appreciation for it because I would look at it through a different lens. It's definitely, I think, a movie you need to see twice. I agree. So I agree with you in the in the fact that when I first left the theater, I was like, nah, whack. But then as I thought about it a little mm -hmm. bit more, I was like, eh, not whack. It's not whack. It's not whack at all. No. Um, but by the way, when me and Sean talked on the big picture, which you guys can listen to, I said that audiences would struggle with the movie, and they have. Forty-four is, million dollar opening, which is fantastic. It's great. We're fantastic, but a little soft, a solid, but a little, a little soft for what people thought, and the the word of mouth is 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 probably not what they thought it would be. And that's what I that's what I hate about it. You know, people putting out these long tweets and all of that or they're, you know, getting on social media and doing their thing. I I really encourage people to see it. I think it's one of those movies you have to see it for yourself to really develop your own opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe twice. So let me ask you a question then. Since you love movies now all of a sudden, 
You said I this just want to sit with the cool kids. You know, you, 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 I'm not a cool kid here at the Ringer. You said that this movie <laughs> is something that nobody can really tell you about. You have to see it for yourself. There's another movie. Well, that was the whole thing. Nobody can tell you what this is. You have to see it for yourself. Donnie, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. You got me in suspense. You guys. Give us another hint. Nobody can tell you what the blank is. You have to see it for yourself. Oh. Donnie, Ooh, do you know that? It sounds now? so familiar. Genre? It does sound familiar. It's Hold a sci fi yeah, movie. Oh, I know what it is. I got it. God damn it. This is though. so easy. I'm so sick of the bullshit. No, like, like, nobody can you tell you what see. the blank okay, is. Okay, I'll give Rachel a hint. You have to see a, it for yourself. Uh, a movie in this um, in this franchise came out last year, I think. Nobody can tell you what the blank is. You have to see it for yourself. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne says the line. The Matrix. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I would have never guessed it. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, of course. I, now I see the whole thing. I get you. I get you. It's okay. All right. Uh, let's take a break. We'll come back with the big deal of the day. All right. Kiki Palmer, who was fantastic in Nope. Really, really, really good. Kiki Palmer is one of the world's foremost entertainers. Agreed. How come she doesn't get the credit? Do you have your own opinion? Are you? Are you? I, well, you I don't know, know. Kiki Palmer you know is one of the world's foremost entertainers. Kiki Palmer is a great actress. She's on Good Morning America. Well, she used to be. She used to have her own show. Yeah. On uh, Straight Hand Sarah and Kiki, she used to have her own talk, talk show, show before that. She be putting out records. She can sing. She can dance. She can do improv. Um, but when people are talking about the most talented people, it's Donald Glover, Justified. For some people, it's Chris Brown, Justified. Mm -hmm. It's Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. Justified. It's whomever else you want to throw in there, right? But Kiki does all of these things too, and the name Kiki Palmer is never mentioned. Do you think when you say that and you name people, you just named all black people, are you saying that she's not getting that recognition in our culture or just all the way around? Well, I, I think most people, the people that I know, know that Kiki is who she is. Mm -hmm. But I just don't hear her being top of mind when people talk about these multi-talented people who do it all. Right. And she's been doing it for so long. You know, it seems like for a lot of people, and this is in no way, I'm not being a dick about it, right? It no, seems I know like you're not. For a lot of people with Nope that she just... They, they're acting like yeah. she, that she just dropped onto the planet. Do you think it's because she's because she's got so many credits to her name? Do you think it's because like you're right in our in in, in the culture, everybody knows what Kiki's about. Mm -hmm. Outside of it, people are at, I think are acting like wow, she's really on a rise because she's doing things that are more mainstream. Right? She was just in Lightyear. She was just in Nope. I feel like I just was talking to her about something else that she was doing. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to be more of non-black people are starting to circle it back to what we were talking about. Give Kiki her flowers when we've always known what Kiki was about. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's because she's doing more things that are see, but she always has like she yeah. had True Jackson. True. It's it's like Hustlers. Yeah, um, hustlers. It's like, why are we? Why, I, yeah. Are we making this up? Are we exaggerating it? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, we love Kiki. We do. I Kiki's mean, a friend of the show. She's going to come here one day. Show. One day we'll get Kiki. Yeah. So a tweet said it was colorism. Uh, tweet your attention for claiming that the perceived difference in mainstream popularity between Kiki Palmer um, and Zendaya throws it through his day into it for no reason is one of the clearest examples of how colorism plays out in Hollywood Twitter thread point to the fact that Palmer and Zendaya are both former child stars, but that Nope is being described in some circles as Palmer's breakout role, which I do think is a weird thing, but whatever Palmer yeah. Kiki 
tweeted, a great example of colorism is to believe I could be compared to anyone. I'm the youngest talk show host ever, the first black woman to star in her own show on Nickelodeon, and the youngest and first black Cinderella on Broadway. I'm an incomparable talent, baby. This is Kiki Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a leading lady since I was 11 years old. I have over 100 plus credits and currently starring in a regional screenplay. That's the number one film at the box office. Hashtag nope. I've had a blessed career thus far. I couldn't ask for more, but God continues to surprise me. Huh. Do I think that this is colorism? No. You don't think it's colorism? I don't. Because I think an argument. First of all, Kiki, let's just acknowledge her tweets. She's 100% right. She told no lies in what she said. Yeah. Listing out her credits, all the things that she's done, don't compare her. She doesn't need to be compared. She is incomparable in what she's in what she's done. Um, so, like, to acknowledge what you just read, that's absolutely the case. I think an argument could be made, which is why I'm saying it's not colorism, is that Zendaya has been in bigger blockbuster movies. Because she jumped, on the, she jumped on the Marvel thing, is what you're saying? Sure. For whatever it is, she's been in Spider-Man, uh -huh. Dune. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> let, me, uh, be, let me tell you something right now. The Greatest Showman. Nobody in the black community gives a fuck about Dune. Which I really enjoyed, by the I way. I love Dune. See, like, shocked. I, probably I, didn't think I saw the movie. I love Dune. I love Dune. Niggas not fucking with no But that's what I'm saying. Dune, it's It just seems that's that she's been... She's Zendaya has been in bigger blockbuster movies as opposed to I I need to look at um, uh, Kiki's filmography. But I think that that's maybe something I'm, I'm trying to think of. Like, I don't think it's colorism. I, I'm trying to think of other reasons that I think people are euphoria Zendaya. OK, so Kiki doesn't think that there's any colorism involved in this. I don't either. And you don't think so either. I don't either. What whatever Kiki say Kiki says is law here. I personally believe that there are roles that Zendaya would be cast in that they would not cast Kiki Palmer in. And to be honest with you, that has nothing to do with Zendaya. That has nothing to do with Kiki Palmer. Sure. Um, it it has to do with the fact that if I'm being honest, and by the way, Kiki didn't ask for this comparison. No, she did not. Her career is as she said completely transcendent in its own right. She didn't ask for this comparison. She didn't. She didn't. But if someone's making a comparison and you're looking at Zendaya, you know, Zendaya had a different path. Zendaya goes to Disney way. She goes to Dances with, Dancing with the Stars way. And sometimes, um, yeah, she does Dancing with the Stars the whole night. And sometimes it seems like here in America, not it seems like, it fucking is that the, Zend the, Zendaya, the, Zend the Zendaya's clean that up. That does the, 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 let it let it let it let it let it let that the Zendayas, which I can't hard to say, of the world, um, that they're a little bit more palatable to mainstream American audiences than sisters uh like Kiki Palmer. And even though if even if it even if that's not the case in this situation, right. A lot of people would feel that way. Would they have cast Kiki Palmer if had she been in uh, the same age as MJ in um in Spider-Man No Way Home is if Kiki Palmer who to me is the a perfect example and a standard of black American cultural beauty which I'm not saying Zendaya isn't because I see sisters in Louisiana who look like Zendaya all the time but I'm saying is our blackness starts to ass assault America at some point right it starts to become especially with our ladies, it starts to become something that sometimes they don't want to put um, in certain places. And so mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder if those things would have been the same. And I'm not saying that they would or wouldn't have been, but I'm saying that for the person that created the tweet, uh, which the tweet itself is in a way divisive. Uh, that's exactly you know what, what I mean? feel. The, the tweet itself is in a way divisive, but that doesn't mean it's completely untrue. Well, it's a big accusation. It, colorism obviously exists in Hollywood, but to take a leading lady who two leading ladies that are black who look totally different 
and have two different makeups and say that it's colorism. We don't even know if Kiki, if Kiki came out and was like, I went for those roles and I didn't get them. I'm saying I'm calling colorism. But for Kiki to be able to list all the things that she's done and continues to do and not affiliate herself with that, with that tweet, that's what I'm standing by, which is what we said at the beginning. But I don't like this because it's putting two black women against each other who didn't ask for this and have no issues with each other and aren't seeing it in this way. And it's causing people. It's to me, it's taking away, which is why I love Kiki's tweet. It's taking away from what Kiki has done, almost making it seem like almost agreeing with her career isn't what Zendaya's is because um, they're saying Zendaya has been favored based on colorism, based on the movies and and, and what her bio and resume is. I don't like this. It, I think this tweet diminishes what Kiki has done. And so that's why I'm glad that she addressed it. She stopped it. Hopefully the conversation stops because it was trending for a while. And we can just move on from it and recognize Kiki exactly for what she is doing, not what she could do based on colorism. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well said. How um how old is Zendaya? Zendaya. They're they're close in age, right? Yeah, they're close in age. But Kiki's been acting since 04. I I'm just looking Kiki at this. Beat. Uh Zendaya's, Zendaya's 25. 25. Donnie. I got this. Wow. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> and, Jesus um, Christ, Donnie. Kiki's 28. Donnie, you know what? See how Rachel just played you and you just let it slide? Donnie, when I say you know stuff, you love. always act in a way, but Rachel gets to play you like that, embarrass you on the show that you are producing. And you, anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> Question. No matter how you feel about it, if people are going to feel, I remember back in the day I was reading this. Uh, my sister was really into dance hall music, like super into dance hall music to the point to where she was going to like dance hall message boards. <laughs> I remember I would read these dance hall message boards and they would say that Sean Paul uh, some people would say that Sean Paul was only blowing up because of his complexion mm -hmm. and I was like god damn it's going down with our brothers in the islands our brothers and sisters <laughs> and us, the same shit um, so matter, no matter what you think of Zendaya or Kiki Palmer the colorism debate isn't going anywhere it's not um, and some of our darker skinned sisters and brothers uh, feel a certain way. The question is, how do you have the colorism debate and have it not be divisive? Mm. If you look at someone and say, hey, Kiki Palmer's done all of this stuff, but we don't see her talked about and celebrated in the same way that Zendaya is. And maybe that's not true, but maybe it feels that way. So how do you have that Zendaya or even um, uh, Zoe Kravitz? Maybe it feels that way so how do you address that feeling and have that conversation mm -hmm. intra community wise without it being divisive well i think the reason this became a topic is because you have critics and other people reviewing this movie who are praising Kiki mm -hmm. like it's the first time they've seen her. Yeah. Because maybe they aren't educated on Kiki's resume. So to me, the conversation necessarily shouldn't be for this particular incident about colorism. It should be more about let me educate you on all that Kiki has done because it seems like you don't you didn't get the memo. Right. I think we can have a colorism conversation, but I think you some it either needs to be very obvious or you need to allow the two people involved that you're about to compare one another to bring it up. If Kiki said, I feel like I've done all these things, but I haven't gotten the acknowledgement mm. as some of the other people that are my age, then I think it's like, well, what, well, why could that be Kiki? Right. Then you start getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. But to kind of throw them in there, kind of pits them against each other. We have to have, we have to talk about colorism more. We do. Do we? I don't know. I think it's a deeply rooted issue in a lot of different. I'm not sure. Not about just this. not just Hollywood, but in a lot of areas. And so, I'd be open to talking to more about colorism. Did you see the trailer for the Emmett Till movie? That's that that's a uh, no. It's a trailer for the Emmett Till movie. Is it? Uh, how is it? What do you mean? How is it? <laughs> I'm more so. I guess I'm more so. Is it a documentary? Is it an actual movie? It's an actual is it a bio? Movie. It's an actual bi biopic. Movie. It's a it's a movie about. Emmett's mom, Mamie Till. It's it's an it's a movie about what do you mean? So Emmett Till movie. It's a movie about Emmett Till. Would you see that? Probably. Zero percent chance I see the Emmett Till movie. I'm assuming black people are behind it. Yeah. So I would go see it. Mm. Yeah. Not, not none for me. 
I made a movie that was uh, had a black guy dying a bunch of times and all of that stuff. That was my one foray. That was that was my salvo. That was my waving goodbye to black people getting fucked over in movies. It's not. This is also a true story. So no, no, I understand. Which is okay. So here's the deal. That to me is look. That to me is makes it harder Mm. when it's a true story. See, if if the movie is made up like our movie, right? Two distant strangers. It's a tough watch. I get it. It is. Black guy gets killed in Two Distant Strangers hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. Some of them you watch, some of them you don't see, but it it happens to him, right? At the end of the movie, he stares into the camera and he says, I'm going to get home to my dog. You can say, hey, that guy's going to he's gonna, gonna live his life one day and get home to his dog. Or you can say this is going to happen in perpetuity, right? But it's ambiguous because it came straight out of Trayvon's mind, right? Emmett Till fucking died Mm -hmm. and it's disgusting and i'm sure that there's an uh, an incredible narrative in there about the strength of his mother and how she was able to take him um you know after death and make him into uh a cultural martyr of sorts Mm -hmm. i don't know if i am if i'm if i'm in the right frame of mind to to to, then you shouldn't yeah but I think it's interesting that the that the movie is about her because I don't know that much about her. Interesting. And so that would pique my interest to go see it. Mm. I can tell you one thing about her. her. It wasn't fun. Oh, wow. I mean, I know that much. I mean, I know what we're going to be seeing. It wasn't a fun time. But it was necessary. So that's almost why I feel like I should see the film. Yeah, well, tell me about it. You see uh, Logan Paul in his review of Nope. Do you see what he said? It's the judge. Oh, really? You want to talk to him? Yeah, let me talk to him real quick. Daddy. 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 Butt call. Oh, really? Does it all the time. All right, call him. Look at him. <laughs> don't, don't, don't call him back. Call him back. Call him back. <laughs> Just put him out. He's <laughs> <laughs> old. Um, I fuck Logan Paul's review. Um, let's move on. Do you know who Charleston White is? Do you know who Charleston White is? Donnie, I want people to know. <laughs> I want I want people to know who Charleston White is. Donnie, can you look up Charleston White and his comments about mm-hmm. Donald Trump on his YouTube? Oh, he's a YouTuber. No wonder I don't know who he is. Can, can you find this, Donnie? Put in Charleston White, Donald Trump. I wish Rachel could see the video. It's a live that Charleston White was doing. On this Trump? This is where he had the gun, where he had the... Yeah, can you play that audio for Rachel real quick? I'll, I'll explain yeah. who Charleston White is for the audience that might not know after. Can you play that audio real quick? For the land of the free and the home of the brave we killing crips fuck Raymond Washington bitch ass niggas and we throwing pitchforks down we as black men will no longer give respect to no motherfucking gang you coward ass niggas cowards running packs and it's been proven with you bitch ass niggas bitch ass niggas all hail the President Trump. All hail the President Trump. All hail the President Trump. President Trump is a greater leader than Tookie Williams. President Trump is a greater leader than King Vaughn. President Trump is a greater leader than Raymond Washington. Fuck your leaders, nigga, and fuck your founders. Now come die for them. Okay. Why would you Stop bring right this into my whole life? Like I knew nothing Dallas. about this man, and then you go. Actually, I have seen him before. He's from Dallas. I've seen him on something else. He's from Dallas. So I'll tell you guys who Charleston White is. I'll uh, I'll uh, introduce the higher learning audience to Charleston White. Charleston White is an internet personality that uh, is totally against what he considers to be a corrosive gangster attitude and lifestyle 
that is running rampant in the lives of young black men. So if you don't know who Raymond Washington is, Raymond Washington is the founder of the Crips. If you don't know who Tuki Williams is, Tuki Williams is one of the most important um, Crips to ever live. Uh, all right. So when he is saying, uh, fuck those guys, he is attempting to antagonize gang members. If you guys could not see the video right there, he was uh, wearing a bulletproof vest and he had an AK-47 above his head. He, uh, Charleston White has said that uh, gang members must die. He wants them to die. He wants to uh, to make them pariahs all over the place and that that lifestyle must be shown to be something that is destructive and terrible for young black men. Is I, he still with us? Who? Charleston White? Mm -hmm. This is the point. He has said this and has really called out everyone. You you heard him disrespecting the life of King Vaughn, who is a 26-year-old man, who is a rapper who was killed in Atlanta in 2020. We actually covered him on Hip Hop Homicides. Um, so I know a lot about what was going on in King Vaughn's life. You heard him saying all of those things. He is antagonizing mm -hmm. these guys to do something. He said something about Soldier Boy. And they ran into each other in Miami, and he maced Soldier Boy. He made Soldier Boy in his face. Soldier Boy talked about the macing. Charleston White talks about the macing. I don't want to get into the back and forth uh, between Soldier Boy and Charleston White. I do think that Charleston White is a compelling figure insofar as, number one, he seems to be totally and completely off his fucking rocker. Like, totally, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, him attempting to I guess I wonder how to say this he is so disrespectful to the dead and he is so uh, hateful in his message against young black men who are joining street organizations for a lot of different reasons I know a lot of different guys in what people would call gangs and some of these guys are the best guys the guys I know not some of them all of them are the best guys in the world and they have an understanding of their neighborhood and of their situation and the reason why they're involved mm -hmm. in these places, especially in places here in L.A. and in Chicago. Um, but I go back and forth with them a lot about whether or not those organizations are positive organizations. And so someone being critical of them, I don't have an issue with. Right. If we're talking about how to raise young black men and how to um, how to make sure that they have options that are uh, are better. Than, than, than prison or death, right? At the same time, the Trump stuff, which I had never seen from him, and just the disrespectful and vile way that he goes about it, I don't feel like that's positive, right? I feel like an yeah. anti-gang message is probably positive overall, you know? Mm -hmm. One of the kids that we interviewed on... uh on Hip Hop Homicides, great kid who became a little homie of mine, FBG Cash, uh, he's already dead. We interviewed him in April. They killed him, I think, last month. So obvious, obviously, we have to have a long conversation about what's going on in these neighborhoods and whether or not these organizations are serving us. But should we be doing it like that? I think the obvious answer is no. And I'm disappointed that you brought this man into my life. Wait a minute. <laughs> and I th and I think I speak for everyone when I say that. Wait. Would you be willing to have a conversation with Charleston White? Here's the thing. Yes, but I always am hesitant when it comes to these people who are so far whatever. You know, having like we've talked about a Candace Owens, having a Charleston White, having someone who's just going to spew out information whether they truly believe it or not just to get a reaction just to cause a scene just for likes and clicks just to get some type of attention is not necessarily what I'm into I'd rather do it to understand the why how did you get here what's the purpose behind you doing all of this why are you, you know what I mean like are you trying to help are you trying to change people are you trying to lead them to the pro what are you doing I don't know if he's not going to answer that and he's just going to be combative because we can go there and we can do that but I would want there to be some sort of back and forth. You know what I mean? I, I just wouldn't want it to be a show. I don't want you to come on here and, and it be a show. I think the main thing is you take a guy like Nip, right? Mm -hmm. Nip, who was rolling 60s crib. Everybody knows that. Anybody who knows anything about Nip 
knows that Nip was a Rolling Sixties crip. He was so much more than a street reputation. He was so much more than a rap reputation. He was so much more than any way, uh, any societal construct that you could use to define him. He was devastatingly curious, always searching for like holistic and community-based answers to some of the problems that he saw around his neighborhood. He was searching for a higher plane of being, Mm -hmm. pushing himself in every single way. And he wanted everybody to feel the same around him, right? He wanted, he didn't just want to go and be, uh, be a guy that had left his neighborhood and had all of these things. He wanted everybody to have those same outlets. And I got to be honest with you, part of me feels like his connection to his gang and to his set gave him the framework which to work from. Mm -hmm. And it also did something else. It gave him the the juice. I'm not going to speak too much. I don't know anything about their politics, but I know that he was well respected. Um, to be able to get some of these things done and and, yeah, and hold his head sure. high around that. That's why it's so sad what happened. So I think that while I'm definitely not against anyone who wants to relitigate whether or not we should be gangbanging, and I, I will. I want to have Glasses Malone on there. Glasses Malone is a is a friend of mine, Seventh Street Crip from Watts. We talk all the time. We talk about gang stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. And he has a very interesting take on it and about why it's actually positive. Um, and he would like to come on the podcast. I would love to have love him on the I had him on the red pill. I would love to talk to Glasses about that. I, I just don't. And Charleston White has disrespected Nip severely, mm. severely disrespected him. And it's just, you disrespect one man like that, you disrespect his entire family, you disrespect his family, you disrespect his brother, you disrespect all the people in the community who loved him. Like, I, like anybody who loved, who loves Nip or Aramis, which was his name, right? Like, right, right, like right. anybody who loves Nip feels disrespected when you speak on him like that because you, you, you kind of understand because it's too far. Like death is... I feel like if you're going to talk about these things, if you're going to be devoted to talking about these things, you have to do it from a place of love and respect. And that doesn't seem like it's love and respect to me. So would we be disrespectful by having him on this podcast? Um, I, we, we would, we, we're not going to have Charles on the podcast, but I was just asking you, I'm not going to do that. But I was just, <laughs> I, would, I would never want to do this. Is just nothing. But like, just that would be specifically, specifically, for for clicks and views and right. that we would don't be specifically that. for that. But I was just asking you if because the question becomes how do we get at the the root of this? How do we talk about it? Like is 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 a lot of people say, hey, he's going super far. Yeah. But if he wasn't going super far, would we be even be hearing the message? That's what Charleston White defenders say. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I, yeah, I can't. Speaking I'd rather of, hear from somebody who's in it, like classes more. Yeah, Glass and Milano will come on the podcast. We might have him next Monday. Who knows? Uh, speaking of of uh, Donald Trump, the baby is a Trump supporter. Donnie, give me the audio. Do I fuck with Trump? Now? Hell yeah. Oh, man. What made you Trump. fuck with him? Trump is a gangster. Nigga, let Kodak go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Lil, back in, though. What the fuck? And Lil Wayne. Nah, he ain't back in. Kodak no? Oh, man, he good. Oh. Man. A lot of that shit don't be mad. It's just media. Media now we just make, you know, media make an ant look like a fucking dinosaur. Like, yeah. You see, we you had. Did you like, see when we had Trump on this serious, shit? Huh? We had Trump on this. Yeah. See, y'all you don't see. That? So y'all got something going on. It got taken. They down, got. Though. It got deleted in twelve Very hours. Fast. Why they do that? Because he's a gangster. Huh? Do you care that the baby says he supports Donald Trump? No and yes. I, I don't care because I'm I can separate it, you know. Like I can be like, oh, like listen to the baby. I'm not even paying attention to that. Like I don't even know how to re- really take you that seriously when it comes when it comes to you saying that. I say yes because there's a lot of people who will. I don't think that he, it's it's a one off for him to say that. I think there's a lot of people who really are like, you know what though, he let Kodak Black out. You know what? 
Wayne says he supports him. The baby says he supports him. You know, like, yeah, maybe Trump is a gangster. Maybe Trump does do stuff that represents us. I really think that there is a school of thought for people who think like that. The baby is highly influential. People want to be like him. They want to think like him. They want to look like him. They want to do what he does. So if he is out here endorsing Donald Trump, then you're going to have other people who are just going to blindly follow him and do the same thing. So I don't I I say no for me, but I have to say yes for the people who will follow what the baby's saying. All right. Uh, We all know that Trump made some inroads with the black men, the black guys in the last election. Not anything to be super alarmed about. But he did better with black men in the last cycle uh, nationally than he did in 2016 which was Mm -hmm. a troubling trend Mm -hmm. that a lot i know a lot of uh black political types were working on let me tell you why this bothers me i don't really care personally like what the baby believes and i don't believe that at this point the baby's political views will influence that many people i happen to disagree with you about that okay but let me tell you why it gets to me or bothers me the baby or Wayne, or Kodak, or uh, even even Ray J, who was down in Mar-a-Lago. Okay, it's a true fact. If we ever get but Ray he's J, he's even, amazing for even, the culture. Even Ray J, who was down in Mar-a-Lago. Let me tell you why. I think it's it's Michael Jackson himself. Um, hey, I think it's. I wonder about our brothers in the inner in the inner cities and what the targeted assassination and depowering of specific black leaders over the course of decades has done to political thought and ideas in these neighborhoods i wonder if by taking out the panthers if by taking out x if by taking out king if by taking out evers if by uh going after Mary and Barry, if all of these different things, right, haven't kind of led to a political brain drain in our communities. Like, do we have a political consciousness that allows us to look at, and I'm not talking about in the places with the other guys that went to school like me or, 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 or wherever I'm talking about, uh, Inside our communities where people are doing work, do we understand the machinations of politics? Do we get what it means to demand something from a politician and they get something back? Do we understand what a politician's platform is actually about beyond the gaudy things that they might put up on social media in order to sway us? When Donald Trump is standing next to Kodak Black, when Donald Trump is standing next to uh, uh, Wayne and taking a picture, he is banking on the fact that you don't know who he is. All right. And mm-hmm. not just Donald Trump, when Joe Biden or any of these other politicians stand next to prominent black leaders, stand next to prominent black celebrities, they are banking on the fact that we don't know what it is that they're really about. Sure. And they're saying, if this person says it's cool, or if I did this for them, then I should be cool with you. Mm-hmm. What I'm starting to wonder is even with the 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 vast amounts of information that are out there, if there's any framework for us to be empowered politically, because we were moving towards that. There was a time in America um, where everything was, where the goal was to get the hood, get the neighborhood, get the inner city uh, to have an understanding about their country and their world. This is what Fred Hampton and the rest of these guys were trying to do. And they were very systemically taken out by the American government. And nobody really took up the cause in their stead. Yeah, we've talked about that, yeah. Like nobody was really around to rally around and like have that situation. And to be honest with you, the Democrats have benefited from that as much as anyone, you know what I mean? And so now when you hear guys that, well, we, but we, what we have managed to do is empower like entertainers, 
celebrities, athletes. athletes. That's why we wanted Michael Jordan to weigh in on politics. That's why we wanted Charles Barkley to weigh in on politics. Mm -hmm. That's why guys like Colin Kaepernick meant so much to us. We've managed to empower them, mm -hmm. right? Guys who already have a job, mm -hmm. we wanted it to be their second job to educate people politically, right? Right. Um, and I wonder now if we're at a point to where we have a lot of people who are so easily manipulated by either side politically because they don't really understand like what it means, like what, what things are. I agree with you, which is why I think you have to care about what the baby's saying. You might not care. I might not care because we can separate it. But there's a lot of people who can't. And I mean, we've kind of talked about this a, a little bit in some of the things that you were just touching on. But when you look at the way that Donald Trump pre being a president was idolized in the black community as far as rappers were concerned and in their songs and people wanted to be like Trump without realizing all the things that he has done that are so detrimental and hateful to the black community. They just looked at him for his wealth and his power and wanted to be like that. So when I listen to what the baby is saying and how he is now basically taking the Donald Trump and putting him next to the Kodak Black, like you said, or looking at the Donald Trump and the Ray J together or the Donald Trump and the Wayne together. I think that that's why you have to pay attention to what he's saying, because they are looking at that and they're thinking, oh, well, at least he cared enough to do this for someone in the black community. You know, the thing about Donald Trump that like. To what you just said, we did have that opinion of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. but also can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. Nobody was telling us differently. Like, literally, no one with a prominent voice was sounding the alarm on Donald Trump. It just wasn't happening. When when D Donald Trump, prior to um, him, you know, doing the birther stuff and all of that stuff that happened, it wasn't controversial to love him in hip hop. It wasn't controversial to love him in the black community. And it wasn't, and there was no one saying that it was. He was big time friends with Russell Simmons. You saw Donald wow. Trump with Mike Tyson. You saw Donald Trump with all types of people across the landscape of black America. And despite the fact that he had taken out that full page ad in 1989, or I guess 1990, whatever, whenever it was. Um, against the exonerated five, there was no one saying, there was no one saying, hey, this is what this guy represents. This is who he is. And this is what he is. No one was saying that. I don't think that no one was saying it back when he took that ad out. I don't think that no one was saying it. I think people said it in the moment. I just don't think that it trickled down. I also don't think that we were lauding up rappers and athletes and stuff the way that we, to the level that we do now. Well, we were. Well, to, to, to me, the to me, the reason why we ended up even doing that with rappers and athletes is because the political leaders, the religious leaders, the uh, the economic leaders were like they got kicked in their asses. And so in the late 80s and in the 90s, the the black activism changed to something that was led by celebrity in the sixties and, and some parts of the seventies, the celebrities worked for the activists, mm -hmm. right? Sammy Davis Jr. And the rest of these guys, they funded the civil rights movie, right? Harry Belafonte was right. in and of himself, like a very, very, very important cog in that. Right. And you had other people like Dick Gregory who were, who Nat were, King Cole, who were very important. People, right? Yeah. Dick Gregory himself was an activist, but for the most part, those guys were happy to be, in the presence of Dr. King and Malcolm X and the rest of these guys. And by the way, let me make sure that I point out Ella Baker and Angela Davis and Coret Scott King and the women that were involved in sure. this and Boehner Russin and everybody like that and stop just naming all the guys. But it's it was very important for them to 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 make sure they funded them. When those guys were gone and not just gone, like stamped out in an example making way, we turned to celebrities to lead a lot of these things because sure. only the celebrities were left. And so now I think that we're still stuck in that and we need to divorce ourselves from it. We need to clearly. Yeah. Clearly. So it's just, it's, it's, so when I saw this, I'm like, 
I pay less attention to what the baby the baby is actually saying because I really don't feel like he knows any better. I'm a, just be honest with you. See, th- we got to stop doing that. I, I just I, I'm we got to stop doing you. that. I, I really How does the baby like not know? It? To me, you can't. If this was years ago before the presidency and you hadn't seen necessarily what Trump and his administration have done that is so hateful and detrimental to our community, so against black people and their and the 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 progression of black people, then you could I, I could see that you would say that. But like Look at what Donald Trump, it's so out there. You can't excuse these rappers now for saying like they don't know any better. I don't think that that's true at all. It's so out there what Trump is and his followers are doing. Fine. Don't don't do it to Trump. Do it to the Trump followers. Like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. and I'm not giving him a pass. What I'm saying is that the ignorance to me is the more is the thing that bothers me more than anything. I, I think really to. We, we talk about all these things that Donald Trump would do, right? But those things to a lot of people don't seem as big as getting somebody out of jail when jail is the worst thing that can happen to you in their world, right? When when prison is the worst thing that can happen to you in their, in their world. Man, when we were doing hip-hop homicides, um, I interviewed the family of a rapper who had been killed, right? Mm-hmm. I interviewed his brother. The brother... I asked the brother about the men that had been accused of killing this guy. Mm-hmm. You know what the brother said? Freedom. I want to see nobody in jail. Freedom. Mm. Now I know why he wants him free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, but what I'm saying well, is you can't use right, that as an right, example. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right, he's like, he's like freedom. And so when they see something like somebody getting out of jail, they go, "Oh my God! Like he must be all right if he did that." And it, I, I really don't think there's the basis there for there's the there's a framework there for us to really be able to rely on them to be able to parse through who Donald Trump really is or who the Republicans really are right now. I agree with you about relying on them, but I do not agree in saying that they don't know any better. I'm sorry. I, I just you. don't. I get you. I feel you. Donnie doesn't know any better. <laughs> see, okay, Donnie, he tries to get it the way that I came at you, but he stays doing that. So you can't even see what he's doing. Oh, it's fucked up. Bishop Lamar Whitehead took to Instagram after about three men robbed him and his wife during a church service on a live live stream. This took place in the middle of a sermon in the International Ministries in Canarsie, which I've been to during the show, around 11.14 a.m. On a live following the robbery, he ex- explained that the men robbed him, his wife, and possibly churchgoers of around $400,000 worth of valuable jewelry. This is what happened in the church when the guys came and robbed the bishop. What you about to go through? Yo, yo. All right, right, right. All right, right. Yo, all right, all right. They got him. Oh, that was it. That was it. That's the whole thing. What do you think? You know, I saw on CNN that it was a million dollars. Could have been. I think they upped it. I think they upped it to a million dollars. Could have been. Um, listen, they were also saying that he believes, I don't know if you said this part, on CNN they were talking about how um, he believes that he was targeted. No shit. That uh, because he was involved in helping the police find someone who shot, who killed um, a New York resident on the subway, I believed he was he was help. He was he helped them track that down or he was involved in negotiations and he rolled up in a Rolls Royce and obviously wearing this jewelry. And then shortly thereafter, this happened. So he believes he was targeted. You're asking me my thoughts on it. Yeah, sure. Obviously, nobody 
should be subjected to that, right? You don't want to see anybody. I can only imagine how traumatizing that is. You're trying to stand up in the pulpit, preach the word of God. You're in this mindset where you're trying to reach out to your congregation and you're in a place of love and faith and all of that. And then that to be interrupted where you're basically terrorized and all your precious jewels are stolen from you. And that's traumatizing to you. Your wife, his eight month old baby was right there. It's upsetting. The, the congregation as well, obviously they were affected who was there. I'm sure it was traumatic for the live stream as well. You know, we don't condone robbery on this podcast. However, I can't help but think about why a pastor's wearing $400,000 They were worth supposed of to rob him. I'm sorry, what? They were supposed to rob him. As in? I was in Canarsie. Oh, so you were in on this? No. <laughs> what are you saying? I was in Canarsie. What's, where is Canarsie? Canarsie. It's in Brooklyn. Shout out to Dred Wu and everybody else out there in Canarsie. Shout out to Mike D. Shout out to Daddy, all of get them. the dings. Like, I was in Canarsie, right? Mm -hmm. With Pop's whole crew. I see what it is in Canarsie. Mm -hmm. I see how it goes down in Canarsie. Mm -hmm. I was there. We talked about Glass Malone earlier. Okay. Glass has said the most, the illest thing to me ever. I can't wait for the rest of the world to hear it. Glass has said to me, he said, guess what? He said, if you go around a bunch of poor people with all of that shit on your neck, with all of that shit in your ears, with all of that shit on your arms, while they living in the situation that they living in, they're supposed to rob you. I'm sorry that that happened. There's no goddamn reason, like you were just saying, to have on no $400,000 worth of jewelry in front of them people. Have on, have it. He have shouldn't it. even have it. Period. They were supposed to get him. Now, wouldn't you think Whitehead, Bishop Whitehead, would know that being in Canarsie? How can you not be from that neighborhood, not be up in the community and know? that you shouldn't be wearing that kind of jewelry or possessing that kind of jewelry or that car. Wouldn't you think being of that community, you would know that? You fucking with them people. Well. You fucking with them. Stop fucking with people. It's hard out there. Inflation going crazy. People going to the stove. Bread, 10 bucks. You fucking with them. Let me tell you something. If I you're see a pastor, pe people smashing and grabbing. Everybody's going nuts. If you're a pastor has a million dollars worth of jewelry, you need to leave that church. I'm sorry. I don't want to worship anywhere. We just we just had a, a conversation about T.D. Jakes on the last podcast or two podcasts ago. I don't want to see my pastor with all of that. Why? Because I'm, on, I'm trying to understand how you're making that much money to afford that, right? I, the collection I need, plate, what you mean? No, collection, there, there's no collection plate. I don't know how big this congregation was. I went to a church that was pretty big. I don't know if you went to his church. I, the church I went to, I, we went I'm to a confused. church in Canarsie. It's pretty big. What? What? Like if, like you said, if if you know that we're in the middle of, uh, you know, like inflation is high, we're on the verge of a recession, or are we in a recession? We're not in a recession. We're yet. on the verge of a recession. Um, you see, people are out here struggling like they never have before, or they haven't in in a long time. And you're out here flaunting a million dollars worth of jewelry. What kind of building is the church in? Are you in a million dollar building at the church? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, are there things that need to be taken care of? Are there just, I just, I, if if your pastor's looking like that, I don't even want to see pastor driving a Rolls Royce. They I don't want to see it. supposed to rob him. Okay, glasses, I heard you. I agree with it. <laughs> they were You condone it. You it's understand not even about it. You it. understand it. Yeah, it was okay. like it's, they were supposed to rob him. Whatever. I'll he was asking for it, is what you're saying. Yeah. He was flaunting them, flaunting it. Yeah. It's triggering. It's very interesting. It happens in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting you to laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Why man. is this funny to you? This shit is hilarious this to is me, This is traumatizing. Dog. No, man. <laughs> like, I like it. So, um, this uh, town in North Carolina, they elected 
a progressive slash black town manager and the entire police office, the entire police force quit. The whole police force <laughs> quit. Not funny. It's hilarious. Henley is the town. Kinley, should I say, is the town. Josh Gibson uh, is the police chief there. He made the shocking announcement of Facebook post on Thursday saying the assistant town manager and a key clerk had joined him as five officers, five officers, in quitting in protest. So I put in my two weeks notice along with the whole police department. It's not a lot of people. Um, he served 21 years on the force. The new manager has created an environment I do not feel like we can perform our duties and services to the community. He wrote of Justine Jones, who took up the position early last month as a black lady. Neither the post nor uh, his letter spelled out specific grievances. He didn't say what she was doing wrong, but he was just saying that uh, he can no longer serve. The police are showing themselves all over the country in such an amazing way. This is hilarious. A black woman takes over, we fucking quit. <laughs> and if that's not the reason, which I believe it is, but if that's not the reason, then maybe your announcement, your shocking announcement on your Facebook should have spelled out the things that this town manager has done where you feel like you are no longer after 21 years able to do your job. What specifically could be so alarming that's happening to where you want to remove yourself from a job that you've been doing for two decades? Mm. Like, Take away the appearance that it's not racist, if that's the case. But for now, it's the fact that she's a black woman taking this role, overseeing you and the department, possibly making some changes that are for the betterment of her own community. And you have a problem with that. You don't want to serve and protect people who look like your town manager. That's that's the way I'm going to interpret this whole thing. Let's break down Kinley. OK, go ahead. Composition. Go ahead. 2020 census, Kinley had 704 watts. They had 503 blicks. Oh, wow. The Black Panther. They had 204 Hispanic and Latino brothers and sisters, two Native Americans, nine Asians, um, and 69 who are other slash mixed. Mm -hmm. It's pretty evenly split there in Kinley. Mm -hmm. Um. Notable people from Kinley. Oh, wow. Who? Al Evans, who is a, a, a Major League Baseball player. I've never heard of Al Evans. He died in 1979. Okay. And then the Ocasons, which are a band that were formed in 1959. They're best known for their 1968 million seller, Girl Watcher. Uh, and they was Blue Eyed Soul. So they were apparently white boys who sounded black. Girl watcher. Doesn't that girl sound watcher. familiar? Is it? I don't know. I'm, I'm a girl watcher. Is that it? I, th I believe so. That's, that's, Doesn't that sound familiar that's to you? The, I'm a girl watcher, guys. I, I, like, Does that song sound familiar to you? Let's see. Let me see. Play girl watcher. Donnie, play girl don't watcher. Don't ask Siri. Did I make up a whole song? Turn yours off. Right? Oh, Donnie's playing it? I play the game I do so well. I'm a girl watcher. I'm a girl watcher. I don't need you to understand. This video, the camera is literally on asses. Really? <laughs> like, things you could get away with back then. It's literally women walking down the street by themselves, cameras zooming in on their asses. Girl watcher, uh... Hit number five on the Billboard Hot 100. Well, now the people in Kinley have to be crime watchers because <laughs> nice. <laughs> they ain't got no more police. Look, obviously we're making light of this story, but here's the reality. Far too long in America, we've acted like uh, we've made police into such heroes, man. Think about all the hero cops 
It's cops. because that's what you want them to be. It's all about duty and honor and yeah. whatever. It's all about, hey, we got to do this. I want to bust some bad guys. These niggas won't save screaming children. They won't serve under mm. black women. All over the country, we're seeing the flaws and the cracks in policing everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say this, part of Biden's plan to give the police even more money and more resources needs to be explained. How is funding this blatant dysfunction from sea to shining sea that the police are displaying, mm -hmm. how is giving them more money going to fix the problem of policing? Mm -hmm. Look, maybe I'm wrong about it. In what way? I could be. They should have more money? I don't know. Well. I think that I think they shouldn't, but I'm asking, how is it going to help? Are we going to, like, what? You like, know what? I'd be down for more money if there was more of a plan in place how to f fix things like this that are happening. When you have more stories, just as the two you pointed out, this one right here, and you reference Uvalde. Federalize it. Federalize it with Justice Department oversight. Okay. Uh, these, these cops are representative of the communities that they're from. And let's be honest, some of these communities have fucking putrid histories of racial discrimination. We cannot trust community-based policing anymore. You said racial discrimination. That could be racial discrimination. <laughs> you <too>. said racial. <laughs> Federalize it. Agreed. Give it to the fucking feds. Fucking sick of this bullshit. Um, oh, I want to announce something to people. I've become in love with Mountain Lion because of this podcast. So I'm doing something I want you guys to help. I'm serious. At first... My relationship with Mountain Lion was actually. You don't have a relationship. I do. I do. At first, and it was why just, do you talk about it in a singular sense? You're like with Mountain Lion. What do you mean? Like with Mountain Lions. Mountain Lion. You know what I'm talking about? East Mountain Lion. In and of itself, <laughs> it's is just majestic. weird to me that you're like my relationship with Mountain Lion. Mountain Lions. Mountain Lion. Because there's not just one. It's it's the lion. Mountain Lions. When we're talking about Mountain Lion. We're talking about one. So each mountain lion is its own person. So we put all we put people together too much with blacks, dogs, cats. What about the one black? What about the one dog? What about the one cat? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so California needs more wildlife crossings. I'm serious about this. An estimated one to two hundred mountain lion are killed on our roads every year. This is very serious, okay? Um and it's really affecting the Puma population of Southern California. If nothing is done, these populations could become extinct within 50 years. I know that's what Rachel wants, but the rest of us who actually feel sorry for Mountain Lion because we know that we're encroaching upon their house, how would you feel if somebody encroached upon your house, which is what we're doing to these beautiful creatures? who I never want to see, but who I respect. Don't ever want to see one. Don't want to play with one. Don't want to... Rawr, rawr, ever. It's good. But there's a bill. Okay? AB 2344, which is the Safe Roads <laughs> and Wildlife Protection Act, which would require state agencies to improve wildlife connectivity and make California roads safer. Your morning commute should not mean the end of a life for Mountain Lion. Support this bill. Tell state officials to pass this bill. It can reduce wildlife vehicle collisions by up to 98%. They have them in Colorado. They have them in Utah. We need more of them here. Mountain Lion is getting killed, and I'm on the side of the cats. I'm not against this bill. <laughs> I'm on the side of the cats, man. I'm not against this bill. I know you want me to seem like I just have this hatred for wildlife. I do not. However, I'm not I'm not an advocate, but I'm also not anti. Why right? wouldn't you be an advocate? So it's just, there's just too many things for me to care about. But to care about animals? Uh, no, I I, I rescue dogs. 
breeder. I rescue dogs. That's fine with me. I rescued I rescued my dog from a puppy mill. No, you did not. He still needed a home. From a breeder. He still needed a home from a breeder. You're a purebred. I rescued him for five thousand dollars. I love animals. I'm not against this bill. I'm not. I would I would vote in favor. Would I take the time to call about it? No, but I'm not against it. I wouldn't be I wouldn't vote against this at all. Let me let me tell you why we should be for the animals. Because they're not fucking playing with us anymore. I know. They're not. 100 pound sailfish stabbed a woman on a fishing boat after leaping from the water. What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, this is nuts. 100 pounds. 100 pound fucking sailfish. I never fucking heard of it. 100 pound sailfish leaped out of the water and paled a 73 year old Maryland woman. A swimmer was attacked. By an endangered Hawaiian monk seal that was protecting her pups, a lady shooed a bear. The bear went away. The bear came back a couple of nights later, killed the woman. You didn't see that story? No. Happened. Obviously, there was the elephant that you guys heard about the elephant situation. You didn't hear about the elephant? Donnie, did you hear about the elephant at the wedding? The wedding? Yeah, funeral. Elephant at a funeral. funeral. Why was it yeah, there? I didn't hear about that. Drug a woman, killed her. What happened, Revenge. Donnie? Tell Rachel what happened with the elephant. Uh, the an elephant killed a woman in India, and during the funeral procession, the elephant came back and grabbed her body and threw it around and then left. Yeah. Wait, wait. The funeral was because he had already killed her. Yes. Yes. Where was the funeral? How does the elephant have access? It's an elephant. It was okay. It's a mystical, magical, intelligent. All I creature. will also say is, I feel like these people put themselves in situations what are to you be talking about. Okay, the she's hundred pound lady. She's the fucking hundred, on a boat. She's on a boat. They were fishing. They caught this fish. Uh-huh. The fish. Look at uh, look actually, at what they said. Not a bad point. As they attempted to reel in the fish, two men on board noticed the creature began to charge at the boat. They put themselves in this situation. First okay? of all, rest in peace to this woman. I no, don't no, want to make it seem no, like no, the rest in peace to these people that have been is, killed by these animals. Yeah, but, no, no. This woman survived. This woman survived. She's taken to the hospital. Oh, the selfish woman survived. The selfish woman survived. Okay. The sw- the swimmer. We you didn't even name this. The swimmer that was intact by an endangered Hawaiian monk seal. She's okay too, but she was injured. But there were signs that said, don't go over there. They had been monitoring the seal who had just given birth to her pup. Tw- I think they're pups. Tw- yeah, they're called pups. Two weeks old. Why are you swimming near them when they tell you to stay away? You're asking for it. You know what I mean? Now, you know I don't why. know. You hmm? know why. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, why? You know why. That's what happens, too, by the way. <laughs> I bet none of these, I bet none of these have been elephant animal on black violence. I de- I, be- I bet you that there's a severe lack of animal on black violence. Sure. You posted, you posted the video of the bear, that bear in the circus. Yeah. That bear in the circus, I'm definitely on the bear side. No, no, no. I know. For sure. Grab that bear by the mouth. Yeah. Definitely on the bear side. Here's the thing. Animals are getting sick of the bullshit. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm being for real, man. We're fucking up the earth. They can feel it. I I believe this so wholeheartedly. Animals feel it getting warmer. They feel the seas rising. They're like, look, these people been fucking up since they got here. All they did was build roads and throw fucking Baskin Robin fucking rappers all over where I got to live. Now, I can't even cross the road, get to one, get to fucking Griffith Park to the fucking mountains without getting hit by a car. And I'm coughing because <coughs> I can't breathe. Animals are going to fucking start fucking us up. It's going to happen more. As global warming gets worse, the animals get more surl. They get more irritable. They're not fucking around. Remember when the pandemic came and we were all in the house and the earth healed itself in two weeks? Cleanest air ever. Fucking raccoons doing backflips in the street. And then all of a sudden, we come back outside, we fuck it up again. They had a taste of the good life. Also a theme in Nope. Oh, that's true. Not that good of a movie, though. Anything Stop. else? Is there anything else? I think we're good. Did you want to do Black Panther? 
Oh, yeah, we got to talk about the Black Panther trailer. Do you know when I saw you post the trailer, I couldn't watch it. Why? I knew, I heard a snippet of No Woman, No Cry. Yeah, No Woman, No Cry. And I was like, I need to be in the right headspace. I need to be alone. I need to sit and watch this. Also realized I never really listened to the lyrics of No Woman, No Cry Mm -hmm. until I saw those lyrics attached to that trailer. Yeah. Coupled with um, All Right by Kendrick Lamar, which we talked about how meaningful that song is to black people in the community. But to have that in the trailer and to let us know, one, we're going to be all right. But two, after the loss of Chadwick Boseman, they're going to be all right. We're still going to be all right because we lost our our black superhero was just so powerful. I can't even tell you if I saw every scene that was in the trailer because I was more overcome with emotion from the songs and just the image of Chadwick Boseman. I did see that. Um, that was deep. Very deep. Ooh, I was not expecting that. It's a fantastic trailer. I, I mean, I, I know it's been announced that Daniel's not in the movie, yeah. but I didn't even notice because the trailer was just that good. So maybe the best trailer of any Marvel movie ever. Maybe. Maybe the best trailer of any Marvel movie ever. Probably, most likely is. So I came away with two things from the trailer. Number one, I'm really excited for Wakanda Forever. From a comic book nerd standpoint, there are a lot of things in Wakanda Forever that are look, they're there to look forward to. Mm-hmm. There's the uh, debut of Namor the Submariner, who is a um, mutant king of Atlantis. They've changed it a little bit. Okay. Um. So he is a mutant. He they, he had his uh his his wings on his feet in there. I'm interested to see what Wakanda looks like. Uh. In the the aftermath of the death of the king, I'm interested to see uh, what a war between Atlantis and Wakanda What's looks like. Atlantis is a you've heard of the Atlantis before, right? Mm-hmm. Atlantis, which is the underworld underwater city, and mm-hmm. DC Atlantis is ruled by Aquaman. Oh, okay. In Marvel, Atlantis is ruled by Namor the Submariner. Who's playing him? Um, I forgot the guy's name, but he he, he looks perfect for the role. Uh, and so Namor and Wakanda, Atlantis and Wakanda, have had a long-standing war, and really, particularly, this war, even more than Namor and Wakanda, has been between Namor and T'Challa. Namor and T'Challa at one point served on this uh, this group called the Illuminati, and the Illuminati is a group that wait, looks is out. this real? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Well, no, you know oh, how no, you no, no, you no, know no, how you real. lie. This is real. But <laughs> Namor and T'Challa could never it, never agree because Atlantis was perpetually at war against Wakanda. Wakanda was perpetually at war against Atlantis. Um, so all of those dynamics look to be fitting perfectly in the movie. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, what looks to be a pretty uh, powerful performance by Angela Bassett. Mm-hmm. Um, a movie with great stakes. Always going to be well directed by Ryan Coogler. A lot of people are probably wondering. What does Van think about this uh, in regards to the – the people have asked. The, the fact that I've been so vocal about recasting T'Challa. You have, but he's not recasted. He's not recast, recasted. Recast, recast. And so yeah. a lot of people would think that um, me seeing that this movie is probably going to be amazing is a reason that I would be like maybe recasting T'Challa wasn't the right move. Uh, or maybe it would draw me off of that that um, that soapbox, or maybe I would back up from it a little bit. I haven't. I doubled down on it. Let me tell you why. I understand from a personal standpoint um, why Coogler and everybody else that was involved in the movie could not recast the role. Mm-hmm. I understand why. And you have to give space to the actual creatives who are making this movie, who want to honor their friend in a way um, that does it at all, uh, that 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 does his memory right, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Here's the thing. T'Challa, the Black Panther, two different things. The Black Panther is a mantle, the protector of Wakanda. There have been several Black Panthers. T'Challa himself is a singular character in his own right who, if you've read the book, acts 
as the lens in which not only the reader sees Wakanda, but sees the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. He is brilliant. He is moral. He has a duty. Um, he's had to make incredible sacrifices to serve and save his people. Uh, at one point, he, in order to save Wakanda, render, like renders all the vibranium in the world inert. Mm. Like he basically yeah. destroys it all or whatever. There's a lot of different things that he's had to do. And that character in and of itself is involved in 97, 98% of the stories that happen in Wakanda. The reason why I feel so strongly about this is not even because of T'Challa. We lost Chadwick Boseman to cancer at age 44. That is an obscene, unspeakable tragedy. And what he went through uh, to do that silently and to act and perform for children and for people like myself who had worshipped these stories for so long is one of the more brave or heroic things I've ever seen an actor do. Mm -hmm. Losing a black man to a disease at 44 is very realistic, unfortunately. Our life expectancy is not quite what it is for other people in this country. Mm -hmm. We die sooner. We have diabetes. We have uh HIV and AIDS, we have heart conditions, you know, we get cancer, we pass away. And it's sad. And we try to tell each other, hey man, watch yourself, do better, whatever, whatever. It's sad. It's a sad fact of the bullshit putrid life sometimes that it is to be black in America. It's a beautiful and we love it, but sometimes we have to deal with things that other people don't have to deal with. For me, T'Challa lives forever. Like he lives forever. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't die be based upon what happens to us in the real world. T'Challa was here when I was nine. T'Challa was here when I was six. T'Challa is supposed to be here when my kids are nine and when my kids are six. T'Challa is a forever character. And it is not a reminder for me, the character of T'Challa, the Black Panther, who he represents. It's not supposed to be a reminder of how hard things are in the actual world. It's supposed to be a reminder of the genius, the ingenuity, and the perseverance that we could have and will have. And to watch the character be killed because of the circumstances that sometimes befall us in the real world, it's too real for me. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, it's not something that other people in this space have had to deal with. They get to have six Batmans. They get to have three Peter Parkers and put them all in a movie together. Mm -hmm. They get to have uh, a different Hulks and a different Supermans and all of this, right? Christopher Reeve, an amazing Superman. He passes away. This is later on in his life, but that's okay because you, it's not okay that he died, but you have uh, Henry Cavill as Superman. You know, you have Adam Welling, you have Tom Welling as Superman. You have Brandon Routh as Superman. Mm -hmm. And the character is, it, itself is, is immortal. But our character isn't. Yeah. Like ours isn't. Our hero isn't immortal. Like he has to die. We have to mourn all of these people in the real world. And then we have to fucking go to the movies. And we have to mourn T'Challa too. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I understand it. It's not fucking fair and i sound like a kid and i get it and i understand but it's just how i feel i think i i think a lot of people i mean i'm not even that well versed in black panther world and wakanda and but just listening to you say it it makes all the sense in the world my question is you see a lot of like you have the ryan coogler era because this is what started it of black panther should he leave? Because we see that all the time, yeah. right? Like from my little knowledge of Marvel, you have the um, the brothers. Who are the brothers? 
um, the Russo brothers. Russo brothers. Yeah, the Russo brothers who are no longer in Marvel. Someone else has come in and is doing, I believe, those movies that they were doing before. Could the Russo there, brothers might be back, but I know what you're be, saying. But could there be a world where Ryan Coogler's done with the Black Panther? So another director comes in and we bring T'Challa back. I'm sure there will be. Well, we they they more was on. Um, Namor was on the Ring of Earth, so we we spoke to him about it, and he said, uh, he said that in the Earth six one six universe, we probably wouldn't see T'Challa again, um, but that leaves open for T'Challa to come through from a multiverse or for us to explore it in another universe, and that's true. And I understand why they did it, and they probably what they what they had to do for their friend, uh, like like Letitia Wright said that. Uh, there was no number one on the call street because that was for Chadwick Boseman, right? Mm-hmm. So I understand that. It's just it's personal a for them. Fucked up situation. I, it's just hard. It's just hard. Mm. Um, by the way, I'll just say this: that's the last I'm going to talk about. It. I'm going to go. I'm going to watch Wakanda Forever. I'm going to enjoy Wakanda Forever. Yes, you will. That's the that's that's the last I'm going to talk about it. But if people are wondering why I was so passionate about recasting the role. It's because of that. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I don't have a serious question of the week. It's okay. I, I like the way you ended it. Yeah. I like what you had to say. Yeah, Donnie, Believe what are your that. thoughts? You made a good point, um, but I, I also feel like I would like to give... All right, the... take your thing caps off, but do not stop <laughs> learning. I am Van <laughs> Lathan Jr. Did not think he was gonna do that to you. He said you got so bad. Donnie, would you like to finish your opinion before? No, nope, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to edit this. <laughs> and I'm Rachel and Lindsay. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>